study of Laplace transforms. So we we'll continue where we left off. Uh, so essentially, uh, before I continue from where I left off, one small correction from my previous uh, lecture. Uh, I had, uh, as usual, uh, made a small sign mistake. You see, sin at into cos bt is equal to half sin a plus b times t plus sin of a minus b, a minus bt. But I had written this as minus, and that is why I was stuck with one of the problems where I know the answer must be something plus, and then I was getting minus. I'm showing. So this is the correction. Please. Uh, yeah, I know. So you have to be careful. I have to be more careful. Uh, you please be careful in your examination. Now, uh, sin at into cos bt is half sin of a plus b times t plus sin of a minus b, a minus bt. But previously I had written this minus, so that's wrong. That was the mistake. So because of that, uh, in this particular case, I had written a plus here. Whereas actually it should be a minus. Of course, minus and minus and things like that will become plus. And rest of whatever I have told is correct. Final answer was correct. Just that I had missed the minus here, so I was wondering why it what happened. So I went back and saw the formula which I had shown was wrong. This is the correct formula. So please make this correction. Okay. So now let me get on to where we uh, where we had stopped. Um, that is uh, just one minute. I want this part. So this is what uh, we have been studying. So let me briefly recall whatever uh, we had done. So we were uh, we had defined Laplace transforms, found uh, Laplace transforms of some very elementary functions, used the linearity property of uh, that, made a table of Laplace transform table of Laplace transforms of some standard functions. Found out that Laplace transform is linear, used that to find Laplace transform some slightly more complicated than the elementary functions like sine square t, cos x square, or e power t3 t minus sine phi t, things like that, or even cos cube, cos cube, yeah, cos cube at, and things like that. We are done. Okay, so that is one level, and that's basically uses linearity, and somehow well you know your old and how you integrate and things like that. Uh, now, then after that, we observe certain properties of Laplace transform. So these were the properties of Laplace transform which we saw. That is uh, change of scale property, which is L of f of a t is 1 by a capital F of s by a. So what is capital F? Again, let me emphasize. Uh, Laplace transform of small f t is capital F of s. Uh, this is a standard notation and I'll keep using this and recalling this all through this set of lectures. Uh, then the very important property of change of frequency or shifting group. Uh, that's essentially said if you know Laplace of small f t, then you know Laplace of e power a t into f t. All you have to do is shift s by s minus a. That's how it's called shifting group. So it has engineering meaning also, but I will not bother about that right now. So what this formula says is, let me recall, Laplace of p e power a t f t is capital F s minus a means, if I know Laplace of small f t, then I know Laplace of e power a t into f t. All I have to do is to change in s, I have to change s minus a. I have to change s to s minus a. That's all I have to do. There is no other I mean, purely an algebraic operation. Uh, just replace s by s minus a, as simple as that. Now, it's very innocuous, but it's very powerful. And then another result we saw is what happens to Laplace of a function when I multiply the function by a t power n. So that uh, again the formula is Laplace of t power n of t is minus 1 power n nth derivative of capital F of s, where capital F of s is Laplace of t. So this again says, if I know Laplace of f t, I know Laplace of t power n of t. No means, I have to do very elementary work, just differentiate it n times. This is particularly useful and uh, we will use it many times, when n equal to 1, which is Laplace of t f t. 
So the plus of ft and how do I run the plus of t of t is differentiate the plus of ft by one once and then change the sign. That's what it says. So the plus of t of t is minus d by ds of capital F of x. And I, I emphasize this, I'll repeat it again. Uh, this multiplication by t corresponds to differentiation. So integration corresponds to division by t. Some sort of, some sort of, you know, at some level, uh, some interesting masala is happening. Mm, we won't go into details of that, but just keep it in mind. So here, L of ft by t is integral of capital F of s ds. That means if I know Laplace of small ft, I know Laplace of ft by t. All I have to do is, whatever I know Laplace of small ft, I integrate it. In this case, if I know Laplace of ft, I want to find Laplace of tft, we just differentiate. So by differentiating and integrating, I become I do some algebraic operations. That's what is the connection between the solid differential equations using the plus transform, uh, which means I transform the given differential equation to an algebraic one. We'll do this in the later part of the course, but first understand these steps. So these are the formula. These are proofs are very easy, it's not difficult. But it's not there in the syllabus, so I will not go into details of the uh, proof. Uh, but I very highly recommend that you know you try working it out. It just follows from the definition. At the most you may have to use some differentiation where integral sign, which you have learned sometime. Uh, but even that is very rare. You just we need to know basic differentiation integration, do it correctly. That's about it. So these four, using these four, we will <coughs> try to find Laplace of more complicated functions. So here it is. These are the illustrations. We saw this already. Laplace of e power t sin 4t. How do I do that? So I know this function is of the form e power at ft. And I know Laplace of ft. So I know Laplace of e power at into sin ft by using the shifting formula. It says in that uh, Laplace of ft, you just replace t by, uh, sorry, replace s by s minus a. In this case, s minus a is a is 2, so s minus 2. So this you have seen it, so I'm going to. Same thing here. Laplace of e power 40, t power 5. So here again I'll find Laplace of t power 5. That's easy, I know that. That is the this is of the form e power a t f t. So I find Laplace of t power 5, which is 5 factorial divided by s power 6. And now I in this I replace, I throw out s and replace it by s minus a, which is 4, so it is s minus 4. That's about it. It's as simple and straightforward as that. And then uh, we are trying this. I think we have finished this also. So let me quickly go through this. The plus of e power minus 3t cos square phi t. So same thing. This is of the form e power at ft, where ft is cos square phi t. But uh, I basically that means I need to find the plus of cos square phi t. If I find that, then s in that should be replaced by s plus 3. That's what we want to do, correct? So you use shifting formula, you get this. So, but how do I find Laplace of cos square phi t? We already seen Laplace of sin square something, how to do. That time I told you how to find Laplace of cos square. So you basically use cos 2a is equal to 2 cos square a minus 1. So in this case, it turns out to be this cos square phi t is cos 10 t plus 1 by 2. And then I uh, know Laplace of cos square phi t is a half Laplace of cos 10 t plus L of 1, which I know I know how to find this. And then replace, uh, if I want to find Laplace of e power minus 3t into cos square phi t, I just replace s by s plus 3. There you go. So that's Laplace of e power minus 3t cos square phi t. Now, I think this is what we are doing. I don't remember, but anyway, I'll tell you this. Uh, Laplace of t cos 60. It's so a similar, we already use this formula basically. So Laplace of t cos 60 means I. If I know Laplace of cos 60, I can find Laplace of t cos 60. All I have to do is differentiate it once and change the sign. Differentiate it means what is it? Laplace of ft. So this is the formula which I am using. Laplace of t ft is minus d by ds Laplace of ft. Here ft is cos 60. So factor f of s is s by s square plus 36. I hope I do these things correctly. Uh, and if I make a mistake, you, you should correct this because I don't remember whether it is 1 by s square plus 36 or s by s square plus 36. First thing you have to refer to a uh, table of Laplace transforms. Uh, I hope I have done it correctly, but in case I made a mistake, please correct it. But, but what I am trying to tell you is what is the idea behind finding 
Laplace of t times some function. So if I know Laplace of the function, I know Laplace of t times the function. All I have to do is differentiate this once. This means we differentiate Laplace of the function once and change the sign. That's what I'm doing here. So Laplace of t cos t is minus d by ds of x squared plus 36. Now we do that, it's an easier portion to denominator square into you know, derivative of the numerator, oh, sorry, yeah, derivative of the denominator into the denominator minus numerator into derivative of the denominator. So I'll run that here and I'll get this answer. I, I, I don't, no, don't trust me, the final answer is correct. Mostly it will be correct, but it could be wrong. So please check because I could have made mistakes with plus and minus and squares and things and whatever. So please check these things on your own. <coughs> ah, I think this is what we will do. Laplace of t is e power minus 2t sin 5t. How do I do this? You see, uh, if the problem would have been easy if instead of giving 2, if they have given me only one, here there are t also is there, e power minus 2t also is there, sin 5t is also there. Three of them are there. If only two of them are there, it would have been very easy. If, for example, <coughs> Laplace of e power minus 2t into sin 5t is very easy to find, you know, the all you have to do is find Laplace of sin 5t and in that replace s by s plus 2. If I have been given only t into sin phi t, that also I know how to do. I just find Laplace of sin phi t and differentiate to, to find uh, Laplace of t times sin phi t. All I will do is to differentiate it once and change the sign. That's what I will do. So now they are given both. You do both one after the other. What should I do first? t or e power minus t t? I will do t first. Why? Because if I know Laplace of t sin phi t, it's very easy to find Laplace of e power minus t t into t sin phi t. All I do is replace s by s plus t. But if I know Laplace of e power minus t t sin phi t, to find Laplace of t into e power minus t t sin phi t, I have to differentiate it once. Differentiation is always a bit more painful compared to replacing s by s plus t or s minus t. So I will first differentiate all when the expression is simpler. Differentiate it. And then afterwards we do That's the algorithm. You do it the other way also, it's correct. It's the same thing you get. So let me write down the details. So this uh, function, given function, is of the form e power at t f t. See, I clearly change t and e power at t because I know I want to, uh, for if I can find Laplace of this, finding Laplace of this is easy. But if I find Laplace of this, and then finding Laplace of t into that is a bit more work. It's correct, you can do it that way also, but this is easier. So, this is what I will do. So, Laplace of uh, first, I will find Laplace of t sin phi t using this, and then I will find Laplace of e power minus t t t sin phi t using this. So, how do I want to do that? Here are the details. So, uh, if I want to find Laplace of t e power minus t t sin phi t, first, I will observe that I know uh, Laplace of sin phi t is phi by s square plus phi square, and now. Because of which Laplace of t sin phi t is just differentiate this once with respect to s. They are easily done. Differentiate with respect to s using quotient rule, numerator as a constant here. So there's no issue at all. So, or you use chain rule directly, which is the same thing. So I get denominator s square plus 25 whole square, and numerator is minus 5, uh, actually 5 into derivative of denominator, but there's a minus outside. So, sorry, minus is always there. So minus of minus, so it become plus 10 minus. Yeah, it's all that. <coughs> yeah, I don't need to spend time on this. this d by d minus of d by ds of 5 by s square plus 25 is denominator square s square plus 25. In numerator, I'll get denominator into derivative of numerator, which is 0. So I won't write that. Minus numerator into derivative of denominator, which I written as 2 as 5 in, minus 5 into 2 as that's minus 10s, but there is one minus outside, it becomes 10 So I think I have done it correctly. So 10s by a square plus 25 whole square. That is the class of t sin phi t. But uh, that's not that's not where my problem is. My problem says find the class of e power minus 2t t, t sin phi t. So then uh, that time I know how to do. If I know the class of t sin phi t, I know the class of e power minus 2t t, t sin phi t. All I have to do is replace s by s plus 2, s minus minus 2, so s plus 2 which is what you see on your screen. So that is 10s plus 2 divided by s plus 2 whole square plus 25. 
So we have standard tricks. These like you know, you play around with P and E power P. Of course, if I don't like you, I can do instead of P, I can do P square also. Uh, the conjure twice, or can you do something else? They are all the things which you I need to do. You figure out. So here is your know, what figure out. Here there will be a problem based on that. So here I'm asking find Laplace transform of e power a e power minus five p sine hyperbolic. Mm -hmm. Pretty bad. Here you see I can do several things of course. But let me start. First approach, first thing which you want to try is this. If I know like Laplace of sine t sine h two p, then I can find Laplace of maybe e power minus five t into sine h two p. Yes, I know I'm going to plus x by s plus five. But then t power 8 into that, I have to differentiate it 8 times. That's a bad one. Even in the first PC, I did not do it. So now I'm not going to do that. So multiplying, if the power is reasonably high, it's not worth using that formula. There must be some other way of doing it. It is possible to do it that way. Please understand what I'm saying. If I comment I see this problem, it's clear that I know Laplace of sine hyperbolic 2 t. Then I know class of e power minus 5t into sine hyperbolic t. Then if I want to find t power 8 into e power minus 5t into sine to h, sine h2t, um, I have to differentiate 8 times. Differentiating 8 times is not something which is welcome or not something which is enticing. So I want to avoid that. How do I avoid that? So let us see it more carefully. So can I write it in some other order? In any order I write, whenever I write t power 8, I have to differentiate 8 times, which is a painful thing. So how about attacking t power 8 itself directly? But then how am I going to find out sine h 2 t into something? It's Laplace transform. Yeah, then you have to use the definition of sine h 2 t. Remember this hyperbolic functions are um, most often, more often than not, it's easier to use its definition directly and solve it. That will what will give you because sine is to be just a notation for e power two t minus e power minus two t by two. It's just a notation, so it doesn't have any other special property. I mean, it has a lot of nice special properties, but you don't have to. Uh, you don't get any computational uh, advantage if you use directly sine is 2t except that you will write a bit less the work is the same so this is a general theory general philosophy don't uh, uh, you know, bother too much about properties of hyperbolic sine 2t just use the definition and go ahead so i'll show you how i have done it here so t power 8 e power minus 5t is hyperbolic sine 2t is nothing but t power 8 into e power minus 5t into definition of sine hyperbolic 2t which is e power 2t minus e power minus 2t by 2 so let's expand this. So this is nothing but half e power 8 e power minus 3t. Please note here. So this e power minus 5t and e power 2t will become e power minus 3t. And the same e power minus 5t and this e power minus 2 will become e power minus 7. So this, I should be able to find Laplace of this without differentiating 8 times. All I have to do is Find Laplace of e power 8 and then think of this function as a form e power 8 into ft. Here it's written in terms of e power 8 into e power minus 3t, but think of it as if it is um, e power 8 into ft. So take ft to be t power 8. Same here also. The ft is t power 8, but e power 8 a is written here. Here it is minus 3, here it is minus 7. So if you use that, it's over. So now um, uh, Laplace of e power 8 is 8 factorial by s power 9. So that means the plus of uh, this given whatever function I have defined, e power 8, e power minus 5t, sine hyperbolic 2t, is same as the plus of this, which is the plus, uh, I use linearity of the plus and pull out half. So I'll get the plus of e power 8 into e power minus 2t minus half the plus of e power 8 into e power minus 7t. But then uh, this is nothing but. In Laplace of t power 8, I have to replace s by s plus 3. And for this, in the same Laplace of t power 8, I have to replace s by s plus 7. I hope it's clear. Nothing much here. All I have to do is use definition of hyperbolic sign. I told you this. Hyperbolic sign is just a notation for uh, some other standard function. So if you try to look.
look for some formula or try to look for uh, uh, Laplace of sine hyperbolic won't help you much. May help sometimes, but mostly it won't help because you directly take sine to x sin x to t is e power 2t minus e power minus 2t. Then you will get the solution much faster. So as you can see in this it turns out to be correct. And then remember how did I come? How did I realize I had to do this? That is important for me you know, to understand that. E power a, it is tempting to use that third formula, the class of t power n into ft is minus 1 power n, nx derivative of f of s. Nx derivative means, you know, I have to differentiate 8 times here, because I am multiplying by t power a. That should be the clue for you. Don't ever, I mean, nobody, how much ever uh, people don't like you, they will never ask you to differentiate something 8 times. So, that is not something which you would want to do. So, avoid that. How do I avoid that? First find the Laplace transform of that. That is what we have done in this case, in this example. I hope it is clear. This is a general philosophy, as I said. Now let us, there is another formula where we use a Laplace transform of some function by t what happens. So let me illustrate a couple of problems based on this formula and then we are sort of in a good shape. Uh, so I want to find here Laplace transform of sine 60 by t. So we'll use the same, there's an obvious formula to use, Laplace of ft by t is integral of uh, Laplace of ft in small ft, which is capital F of s, with respect to s. So how do I do that? So I have to first find Laplace of ft, ft is here 60, sin 60. So Laplace of sin 60 is 6 by s square plus 6 square. So Laplace of sin 60 by t is integral of 6 by s square plus 6 square ds, which is you know, this is a standard integration you must have done in your class 12. Uh, um, you must have done differentiation, which are you must have learned it somewhere. Uh, uh, integral of a by x square plus a square dx is tan inverse x by a. Uh, how to recall this? You see what is the derivative of tan of x by a. Derivative of tan of x by a is a divided by x square plus a square. These are all things which you should know well. Otherwise, you won't be able to attempt these problems, especially integration. It gets worse. So, you have to know these standard integrals. So, if you don't know, go home, open out your class 12 textbook, there is a table of integration, use that. If you don't have your class 12 book, use the internet. Use the standard, uh, I have shared already some uh, web pages uh, that Lama University calls online notes. It has all sorts of these kind of formula and then how to solve these problems are all there. Please go through that once. So recall all these formula before your exams, you will need this because this is the crucial point. Otherwise, and this formula is easy. What I'm trying to tell you is what you are being taught, what are you what you are being taught in health service to be is easy. That is easy provided you have understood and you can do your profession with what you have already been taught in your first PC, second PC and first year B. Otherwise it won't be possible. Uh, so <coughs> that is what this is and now uh, this tan inverse of S by 6, this limit is between S uh, to infinity. Uh, So this limit is between s equal to, um, uh, limit is from s to infinity. So then uh, if I put infinity, tan inverse infinity equals pi by 2 minus tan inverse pi s by 6. If you want, you can write it as cot inverse s by 6. That's uh, okay. If you can do it, otherwise it doesn't matter. Uh, so I hope you understood how to solve this problem. This is Laplace transform of sin 60 by t. How do I do this? So I use this formula, Laplace of t by t is integral of f of s. So basic thing you need to know is integrating this your class 12 uh, integration. Otherwise, these problems sound very tough and you're completely lost. And now let us see one more Paranda creature like this. So this is e power minus 5t minus e power minus 6t by t. Uh, first attempt could be, uh, let me try e power minus 5t by t minus e power minus 60 by t. But it won't help you much because anyway you have to integrate twice. 
But integration twice or twice not integration integrate twice. You have to integrate first. You will have to integrate Laplace of e power minus 5t, and then you have to integrate Laplace of e power minus 6t and take um, difference of the two, both from s to infinity. So one can do it, but I'll try to do it in a slightly different way, which is I'll put the both of them together, which is Laplace of e power minus 5t minus e power minus 6t by t. Is by that formula the plus of e power minus 5t minus e power minus 6t integral of this from s to infinity. This is the formula. The plus of f t by t is integral of the plus of f with respect to s and limits varying from s to infinity. So I am using that. This I know. I know the plus of e power minus 5t minus the plus of e power minus 6t. I know. This is nothing but one by s plus five minus one by s plus six. This I know how to integrate. One by s plus five. What is the integral of that? Log of s plus five. Correct. So this is log of s plus five minus log of s plus six, which is shortened into saying log of s plus five by s plus six, and s ranging from zero uh, s to infinity. Please recall all these limits. They are all important. So the plus of e power minus 5t minus e power minus 6t by t is log of s plus 5 by s plus 6 limit of s from s to infinity. Now let's try to evaluate it. This is what I told you. There will be some problems when you are trying to evaluate these limits. Uh, if I put s equal to infinity, I will get infinity by infinity. Now infinity by infinity is not even defined. So log of that is goes for a 6. So how do I do this? You must recall this from your first PUC. You must have done problems like this. They must have asked you a problem like find limit of logarithm of s plus five by s plus six when s tends to infinity. Limit of s tends to infinity. How do you do this? Can you recall? Easy. You basically divide both numerator and denominator by s because then I get five by s and six by s. Which will become s s tends to infinity. They become zero on this side. I have one. So that's precisely what I'm doing here. Uh, okay, uh, doing that in two parts. So first, log of s plus five by s plus six from s to infinity means I will write this first. I will not substitute s equal to infinity. I'll write it. Limit of log of s plus five by s plus six s tends to infinity minus limit of S plus five by S plus six. I just put the limits. That's all. So, I mean, I'm not put the limits, but I'm trying to put the limits. The upper limit is infinity, which I'll write it as limit S to infinity. Lower limit is S, so I substituted value of S here. So this is limit of log of S plus five by S plus six as S tends to infinity minus log of S plus five by S plus six. How do I evaluate this? This is what I told you. Divide the numerator and denominator by S, and you are in a good shape. So the moment you do that. Um, uh, you get one plus five by s and one plus six by s. We so divide both numerator and denominator by s. I can do that because s is tending to infinity, so I'm equal to infinity. And now, as s tends to infinity, five by s tends to zero, and six by s tends to zero. So one plus zero and one plus zero. So I get log of one by one, which is log of one. Log of one is zero, so this whole thing goes for a six. Means. It becomes zero. Sorry, I shouldn't say it as it goes for a six. I don't need to write that. This is this becomes zero. So answer is log of s plus six by log of s plus five. So that's what this, as you can see in your on your screen. But uh, what I want to emphasize here is, see, your third year, third semester B is over at this step, very first step. The plus of somebody by t is integral of the plus of the numerator. That's all over. After that, this is PUC integration. This is second PUC integration. This is uh, definition of log. This is uh, evaluation of limits which we did in first PUC. So this is all PUC problem. You see, about 80% of the problem is PUC problem. It's very easy actually if you know what you have done here PUC. If you don't know, then you are in trouble. Is that okay? Is that clear? See the third year, third semester B part is here. This formula, the plus of f t by t is integral of the plus of f t. That's all. 
after this, how to evaluate this? Uh -huh, okay, this is also there. The plus of e power minus 30 is also what we learned in this semester. It is 1 by s plus 5. And similarly, 1 by s plus 6. They are the easy part. The difficult part seems to be what you have not learned in your PUC and your first year degree. So please, uh, this is just to illustrate that you must learn what you have, you must understand what you have learned before. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. Then otherwise it starts looking very horrendous. It's quite scary to see. If I didn't know anything, if I see these expressions, I'm just scared. So I don't want that to happen to you. So please go through your past uh, studies. So here is another question. Laplace transform of e power minus t sine t by t. More or less you must have been expecting this question. Because here it is Laplace transform of ft by t. But Laplace transform of ft is easy to find in this. Because all I have to do is direct application. The plus of e power minus 30 minus e power minus 60 is the plus of e power minus 30 minus the plus of e power minus 60 both times. So here if somebody wants to make you work a bit harder. So I will use the same philosophy, same formula. The plus of ft by t is integral of the plus of e power minus t sin t. But how do I find the plus of e power minus t sin t? Ah, I know. I have a formula, shifting formula also I use. So how we do it? Here, yes. Here I already, I mean, I'm not spending time on that, but I written it down here, but I already explained to you. Laplace of e power minus sin t. Sorry, Laplace of e power minus t sin t. How do I find? Laplace of sin t is 1 by s square plus 1. Remember, 1 square by s square plus 1 square. Laplace of sin t. The plus of e power minus t into sin t plus s by s plus 1, s minus minus 1, which is s plus 1. So this is what the plus of e power minus t sin t is. Now the plus of e power minus t sin t by t means you integrate this with respect to s from s equal to s to infinity. Right? That's the last formula which you know, that's the property which you are trying to use of the plus transform. So then Laplace of e power minus t sin t by t is integral of ds by s plus 1 whole square plus 1 s to infinity. How do I integrate this? Again, your b problems are all over. Means what you learned in b is over here. From here onwards, it's only your class 12 integration. How do I integrate 1 by s plus 1 whole square plus 1 with respect to s? That we know it is tan inverse of s plus 1. Put s plus 1 equal to x you will get dx divided by x square plus 1, which is tan inverse of x, x is s plus 1. So I get tan inverse of s plus 1, s running from 1 to uh, s to infinity. If it is infinity, tan inverse infinity plus 1. Infinity plus 1 is infinity. So tan inverse infinity is pi by 2 and tan inverse other one will remain s. So pi by 2 minus tan inverse s plus 1, which is same as cot inverse of s plus 1. I hope it's clear. Basically, the examiners will want you to go around computing the class of this numerator. This is the fundamental idea. When you see a function, if you want to find its Laplace transform, recognize in that function which part can you find Laplace easily. And then try to use one of the properties of Laplace transform. That is how, that's the general philosophy in all the problems which I have solved. Observe this general philosophy that will help you to prepare for your examination. If you run a horrendous looking function, find in this function one sub part, one part of that function for which it is easy to find Laplace transform. Then try to build up the big function from that small part with some standard additions like this e power minus t or by t or in the previous case it was something else. <laughs> you saw all those things before. So this is all. Basically, as I said, we more of a test uh, about how well you can integrate. That seems to be very important here. If you don't know integration, you are bound to be in trouble. Okay. So now <coughs> we have what we have done. We have you know, understood what Laplace transform is. We have found the, I mean, rather, we have understood the definition of Laplace transform. We have found Laplace transform of some very easy functions. Um, We have seen how Laplace transform behaves with respect with um, this uh, uh, multiplication by t power n or multiplication by e 
power A B or division by T. These are the things which you have understood. And I think I have shown you sufficiently many problems also based around this. Now I want to talk about Laplace transform of periodic functions. Perhaps many of you are seeing periodic function for the first time. So I will spend a few minutes explaining to you what a periodic function is. Uh, this is very important, not just for Laplace transform part. It will keep coming in your Fourier series and Fourier transform part also. So first three modules, this periodicity is important. These functions which are periodic are important. So let us anyway, we have sufficient time. So let us digress a bit and slowly try to understand what are periodic functions. So definition is easy here. Definition is right here on your uh, screen. A function f is periodic if f of small t plus capital T is f of t for all small t. Capital T is a fixed number. Uh, so what does it mean? Means how do I understand this? And read the definition. But how do I understand this? Best thing is try to see, recall what were some periodic functions which you knew well. Two classic examples of periodic functions are sine and cos. They are the, you know, the best examples and most easily accessible examples. Let us try to understand what does it mean to say they are periodic. We do that by graphing the functions, graphing both sine and cos. I'm sure you've done it thousand times or million times, sine and cos you must have graphed. But I want to bring out the aspect of periodicity in that, which you know well, but I just want to, um, you know, make you understand this periodic functions very well. They are the heart of a lot of engineering and uh, application of mathematics in that area. So graph of sine t is what you see on your screen. Uh, we know this. Uh, this is 0, t equal to 0. This is t equal to pi by 2, where sine pi by 2 is 1. And this is t equal to uh, pi, where sine pi is 0. And similarly, this is t equal to 3 pi by 2. This is t equal to 2 pi. This is equal to t equal to 3 pi, 4 pi, and this side, this is minus 2 pi, I'm sorry, this is minus pi, this is minus pi by 2, this is minus 3 pi by 2, etc, etc. Uh, we know very well that sine function is never bigger than plus 1 or never smaller than minus 1. And we know this is, this is the graph of sine function. We know this well. Uh, what I wanted to observe is, you see how suddenly some part of sine graph has become blue from green. Which part has become blue? Sine value of the function between 0 and 2 pi. 0 is here and 2 pi is here. Between them, the value of sine has become blue in this. Why have I made this blue? Observe this. You see 0 to 2 pi sine looks like this. Only 0 to 2 pi. That means suddenly you must not remember, you must remember to forget what is outside 0 to 2 pi. That means from here, this side I will forget. From here, this side I will forget. So I am left with only the blue line. You see that sine function from 0 to 2 pi looks like this. It looks like, I don't know, what is this shape? This is sinusoidal curve. Between 0 and 2 pi, that's all, that's what it is. What I want you to observe is, you see, the same shape continues from 2 pi to 4 pi. You see, whatever is the blue line here, if you cut this blue line and place it on this, then I'll get value of sine from 2 pi to 4 pi. Right? 0 to 2 pi, whatever is the value of sine sign, same are the values between 2 pi and 4 pi. That is the upshot of this graph. So this blue line, you can repeat it from here to here is also it's the same blue line, just that it has shifted here and now I can put it there. Not just, of course, same thing happens from 4 pi to 6 pi also. The graph is not big enough to accommodate the full thing, but I'm sure you can understand. This shape where my cursor is moving is same as from here to, there is no space, so I am stopping here, otherwise it would have gone like this. So 0 to 2 pi, whatever is the value, 2 pi to 4 pi is the same as the value, 
4 pi to 6 pi same is the value. So it's not on the figure, but you can see 6 pi to 8 pi is also same value, 10 pi to 12 pi also is the same value, 1000 pi to 1002 pi also is the same. Not just positive sides, you are not interested, but you should know. Uh, negative side also it's the same thing. You should know it because for your Fourier series, Fourier transforms, you will need the negative part also. So I'm just helping you to understand whatever comes later. So my uh, minus 2 pi to 0 also, this function looks the same. What does that mean? That means you take any value here between 0 and 2 pi. If I take this, I won't tell you what is this. I'm just showing you by cursor. This value, how far it is from 0? Take the value of sine at that point. The value of sine at this point means I come from here to here. What is the value of sine there? If I travel the same distance from 2 pi and take the value of sine, it will be the same thing. Recall again. Let's go slowly. Let us take pi by 2. So I walk pi by 2 from 0 and I end up here. What is the value of sine pi by 2? 1. Thank you. I'll note it down. Now walk. How much do I walk from 0? I walk pi by 2. Same you walk pi by 2 from 2 pi. So I'll end up with uh, from 2 pi. If I walk five, uh, if I talk, if I walk pi by 2, I'll end up at 5 pi by 2. Correct? This 2 pi and this 5 pi by 2. What is the value of sine at 5 pi by 2? Oh, it is same as 1. Whatever is the sine value here, sine value here is the same. Whatever is the sine value here, here means I don't know. Some distance I walk from 0. Same distance you walk from uh, you know, 2 pi. The value of sine is the same. That means what? If sine of t plus 2 pi is same as sine of t. Doesn't matter how many 2 pi's you put. Uh, how many is later? And if you take sine of 2 plus uh, 2 pi plus t is same as sine t. It could be any amount. It could be you are you don't have to stop at pi. It could even come 3 pi by 2. And here also I will put 2 pi plus 3 pi by 2. So it will come all the way here. So there it is. Value is minus 1. You understand what I'm saying. So periodic function means precisely this definition. F of t plus capital T is small f t, where capital T is some number. It depends on the periodicity. That is called periodicity of the function. In this example, the, uh, in the example of sine t, capital T is 2 pi. That means periodicity is 2 pi. So sine of t plus 2 pi is same as sine t. Similarly, it's the same is true for cos also. How do I know? You can see. Uh, well, let me try to graph this cos function. So this was sine function. Cos function is there is a phase lag of pi by two. Uh, you know this. I mean, uh, cos t you must have plotted several times before. Cos zero is one. Cos pi by two is zero. Cos three pi by two is minus one. Cos two pi is zero. So, correct. Cos 2 pi is, uh, no, I'm saying something wrong. Cos 0 is, uh, sorry, cos 0 is 1, correct? Cos pi by 2 is 0. Uh, this is cos pi is, is minus 1. Cos 3 pi by 2 is 0. And then this is cos 2 pi. Cos 2 pi is 1, correct? This is cos 2 pi plus pi by 2. Each, uh, I mean, length from here to here is pi by 2. Each vertical line is separated by pi by 2. So this is 1 pi by 2, 2 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 4 pi by 2, which is 2 pi. So this is 2 pi. That's correct. So you observe cos function from 0 to 2 pi you observe. How does it look? Here is a graph. You can see that red curve. Red curve is the cos curve. So only from 0 to 2 pi, it's become whatever color it's called. Blue is it? Or purple or I don't know what this color is. So it's certainly different from this red color. So this uh, vessel kind of thing, it's like some sort of uh, vessel or some sort of V, you see, very V. It's like this. Now this repeats. See from here to here, 2 pi to 4 pi, it looks the same. Whatever is between 0 to 2 pi, same thing repeats from 2 pi to 4 pi. 
same thing repeats from 4 pi to 6 pi same thing repeats from minus 2 pi to 0 just like what it happened in sine function same thing happened here yeah but of course values are different that's okay but the phenomena is the same what is the phenomena you start at any point between 0 and 2 pi some point i start here here means what i have walked some distance from 0 to this much and same distance you walk from 2 pi to from 2 pi in this direction whichever point you reach the cos at that point is same as cos at this point correct so that means what cos of t plus 2 pi is cos t which means what cos is a periodic function with period 2 pi like sine both have same both sine and cos have same period they are not same functions of course they are shifted there is a fair in engineering language we use the term they have a phase lag of pi by 2 they have a phase lag of 90 degrees pi by 2 radians so so this is a periodic function so i will just show you everything in one go so this is a function so let me recall function is a function f is said to be periodic if f of t plus capital t is f of t there is one small you know, question here you see f of uh, t plus 4 pi is also same f of t so what is the period is it 2t or 2 pi or 4 pi yeah i know i'm not being uh, i'm not splitting here you take the smallest of such periods because for this uh, strictly speaking 2 pi is a period 4 pi is a period 6 pi is a period 10 pi is a period all of them all even multiples of pi are periods but i want to consider the smallest amongst them other than cheating and cheating means i'm not being fair so i don't want to do that so i'm not going to uh, air splitting definitions of all these things it's called fundamental period and things like that let's not bother about it so we understand that period is the smallest guy where the function repeats so function so that smallest guy where the function repeats i'm denoting it as capital t so function f is periodic if f of small t plus capital t is equal to small f t for all t so as i said sine and cos are two of the best examples of uh, periodic functions now so why did i do all this so basically i am trying to find i want to find laplace transform of periodic functions that's my aim now so of course as usual there's no proof of this uh, formula in your syllabus so i won't bother writing the proof but definitely you, know, you must know this formula this is the formula so if uh, so let me read it out for you laplace transform of a periodic function f with period capital t that means ft is a function which is periodic function with period capital t you can think of it like sine t or cos t that's very 